Okay, a lot going on in our church. Let us take a deep breath together. All right. Take a deep breath together. One more time. What's our hearts, minds, and our bodies here in this sacred space? Let us open our hearts and worship God in spirit. All who are able, please stand. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. O Lord, our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. We proclaim your name to the whole human family. We praise you in the midst of this congregation. O Lord, our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Let us continue to praise our majestic creator. When we reflect on the goodness and majesty of God, we cannot help but recognize our own mortal frailty and failing. And yet, God cares for us. Emboldened by God's love, we can be honest in confession, assured already of God's grace. Let us confess together. Sovereign God, who are we humans that you pay any attention to us? And yet you have entrusted us to care for all of creation. We confess the times we have thought too highly of ourselves and the ways we have twisted our charge to care for creation into permission to dominate and subdue it. We confess the same human tendencies to dominate and subdue other people. It is easy for us to ignore or take for granted our own privilege, 
rather than seeking to dismantle unjust systems of supremacy. Your desire is for peace, but so often we choose comfort and call it peace. Remind us of who we are and whose we are. Remind us of our interdependence with creation and our dependence on you, our Creator. Set our hearts and minds on your will, made known to us in Jesus Christ. Amen. sanctifies, and those who are sanctified are all children of the one God. Jesus is not ashamed to call us his beloved siblings and family. Our sin is forgiven. We are made one with Christ and with each other. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. God of wisdom, though we are mere mortals, you are mindful of us. You know the voices inside and out that distract us. You know the words we need to hear. By the power of your Holy Spirit, enable us now to receive your holy, life-giving word. Amen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, a reading from Genesis. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle, and to the birds of the air, and to every animal of the field. But for the man, there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs, and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman, and brought her to the man. And the man said, This at last is bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and mother, and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. Holy Wisdom, Holy Word. the spirit of the church is saying in a letter to the Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets, but in these last days he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also reflected the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory in the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, 
he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, or mortals that you care for them? You have made them a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them. But we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. Holy wisdom, holy word. The Gospel of the Lord according to St. Mark. Now some Pharisees came, and to test him, they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? And he answered them, What did Moses command you? And they said, Well, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female, and for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house of the disciples, asked him again about this matter. And he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant indignant, and said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he looked them up, and he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. My sermon is titled, Marriage, Equality, and Justice. Now, I did not choose this text this morning. Um, It came to us this morning. And it so happens that we celebrated yesterday uh, our more like congregational status. And within our own church, it's been a long battle and struggle over the decades on this question of marriage. Um, And as you know, Over the years, our denomination has struggled, and so because of this sexuality and human uh, spirituality and this ongoing debate on biblical basis, whether it was wrong or right, morally okay or not, and is it theologically sound, and there's been a whole bunch of books that have been written over the decades. Have you read any of these? Yeah. And tonight, I'm not here to regurgitate. It's done. And people have left the con- churches. The church was split on this. And after a Presbyterian church, there are now Methodists having gone through the, the, the Episcopalians. All these mainline congregations have gone through these question of 
you know, one's sexual and gender identity issue and what it means to um, have a family and etc. Now, it's been 10 years, almost 10 years next year, that under the federal law now, under the nation, all states are now have the law where you could have uh, uh, same gender, same sex uh, marriage now, right? After the landmark decision in um, nine years ago, was it Oberfell and Hodges, five to four decision by the Supreme Court made the uh, our nation into a marriage equality, full inclusion of marriage equality, and justice was served. But of course, because it's in the law doesn't mean there isn't discrimination. There's still a lot of discrimination, unfortunately, that are still practiced and that are still um, in the air in our society. I remember 20 years ago, um, within our own church that I serve, Palisades Presbyterian Church, um, we had a session meeting, and we were debating whether we should officiate back then what they called the Holy Union. Do you remember that? Does anyone remember and recall? We didn't call it marriage. We called it a Holy uh, Union because state didn't allow legal marriage between they called same-sex marriage at the time. So among with the church that I served, we had a, a couple that came to me and said, Dave, will you be able to officiate our wedding or our marriage or celebrate our union? And I said, sure. I mean, I've known you guys for years. I mean, like, you go through the same thing. You guys are a loving couple. Let's do this. So I went up to the session and I said, let's do this. And they were like, you know, you could be in trouble, Dave, because you could be. Um, at the time, this is before the Covenant Network was formed in response to all these legal issues within our church polity, and said, well, <clears throat> you're risking, uh, uh, you might be defrocked. Have you heard the word defrocked? I love that word, defrocked. <laughs> it's a church language. That means you'll be excommunicated, so to speak, right, uh, from the church. And I remember uh, there was a, a, a dissenting congregations at the time that protest against the, uh, this injustice that was taking place within our culture and within our society, that we should give the equal rights to all people, regardless of their sexual identity. So um, the session decided, yeah, let's do this. Um, it didn't come easily because we had a long, long discussion about this because what does our polity allow and what does it mean if you actually conducted this? I mean, there's no legal implication because it can't be allowed in New York State at the time. Um, but we did it anyway. And I remember, this was 20 years ago. Um, and it was a beautiful, beautiful service. Uh, uh, and everyone was very moved. I thought it was a very historic moment. And that congregation was a more like Presbyterian church. Uh, before I showed up, it was one of the first more like Presbyterian church. And at the time, I was also involved um, with that, all may freely serve. Have you heard of that? Yes. Led by Janie uh, Spar. She's an evangelist within our denomination. Like a th thorn in the side of our denomination. She kept poking at it. You know, and bring the issue up. And people are saying, you're being too political. <laughs> but since then, a lot has changed. A lot has changed. And you know, younger Z generations mean, what are you talking about? This is something that shouldn't be... It's so obvious, right? What was obvious today to, for many younger generations was not obvious to the older generation at the time. Now, here we are in our gospel reading today. There were those who wanted to test Jesus about the whole idea of marriage, right? And, and what did Jesus respond? In his days, he was rising to the occasion of the injustice of this marriage, that they were dismissing women in their uh, marriage. What, what did they say? They give a marriage a divorce certificate and just write them off? Now, of course, the legal implication here is that at the time, women didn't have any status, legal status. And if you're not in a marriage situation, either you're a widow or you're divorced, then your economic social status is going to be uh, in a very vulnerable situation. Well, not that the same situation here, too, when people go through divorce, too, in some ways. But in any case, just Jesus saw the injustice of this testing. And he said, what did he say? Because of your hardness of your hearts. 
hardness of our hearts. And he quotes from the uh, Old Testament reading from the Genesis that we read today, right? Originally, we were supposed to be together, united in this uh, uh, paradise. But because of your stubbornness, Moses allowed this dismissal of the certificate, so it says. Now, when I, my first hearing of this text, to be honest, I cringed. Because you know and I know that in our community, in our society, there are a lot of folks who are divorced here, right? Yeah, yes, and I'm one of them, right? So how do you then interpret this text? Where is justice in this? I think we forget that uh, in this story, and the previous gospel readings and the readings before, what stands out consistently in our readings for the past few weeks? What, what stands out? Huh? There's somebody here in this whole discussion about justice, the whole discussion about our shortcomings in our relationships, in our community and beyond. And there's always a particular paradigm shift that takes place that Jesus always introduces us. And what is that? Towards the end. Child, right? This is like a Bible study group now. That's right. Remember the Sunday before and the before? At the end, Jesus always introduces. When there were power struggles among his disciples, he said, hey, stop that. Unless you are like this child, you will not enter the kingdom of God. And then again, bring this little one to me. And centers the most vulnerable and most uh, powerless human being, a little child, centers it and says, unless you're like this child, you would not enter the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus blesses this child. That's his sense of justice. To center the most vulnerable and the weak in our community and to bless them. Now, if we use that as a paradigm for the way in which we look at our world, what will happen? Look what's going on in our world. Oh, these terrorists are hiding behind these children in school and in hospital. But if you were to center and value the children's lives, there should be no more war, right? So what if they were hiding behind children as a shield? Because the children represent our humanity, right? Why is it that we, are, we dismiss our children and we see on a, a live footage, uh, what is it? Uh, now we, we, we see the war happening by minute by minute. It's, it's, it's traumatizing to see children dying. The, the most recent update, especially in Gaza, was happening with the medical volunteers that went overseas. Um, there are many different medical groups that went overseas, and they had a number count. You know, officially we hear the word, uh, the number 40,000 plus, but the actual number is over 100,000. That's a lot of people within 3 million population. And now this war going on in Lebanon, and this violence is spreading like crazy, like a wildfire in the Middle East. Today is a World Communion Sunday. And there are brothers and sisters around the world that are celebrating the Lord's Supper. In Lebanon, I, I don't know if I share this with you, almost half of the populations are Muslim, but do you know what the other half is? Christians. There'll be churches where bomb is exploding in Lebanon where they will be celebrating World Communion Sunday. This is another way in which we show solidarity across the globe what our faith means. And here we are, we listen to the gospel reading today and recognizing the injustices in our world. And yes, we're celebrating, we're happy that we are a more like congregation and that we continue to spread the good news of inclusion and affirm uh, our brothers and sisters, not only on equal uh, marriage equality, but also of uh, justice within our community and centering the most vulnerable as our paradigm, 
the way in which we see our world, and to celebrate communion worldwide, be in solidarity with those who are suffering, to be in solidarity with those who are peacemakers, and those who are in the other parts of the world whose lives are being bombed and are yet celebrating communion with us. What does this all mean? What does this all mean? Here we are, West Plano, or I would call Center Plano now. Right? We're in Plano. Our community has changed, and there are still a lot of challenges ahead. And we're one of the few more like congregations now. And this coming uh, Saturday, we're going to reach out to our community and make ourselves more visible to say there is a faith community where you're more than welcome and join us, not only in worship, but in our work as a peacemakers in our work and labor for creating justice for hope. But it's grounded in the idea that we center our worldview from the most vulnerable. And that's what exactly Jesus does time after time after time. If you read the gospel reading, Jesus always go back, centers the most vulnerable and more questionable person. Like, if you look at the story, look at the story. The Samaritan woman. The, the Samaritan guy who helps, right? The Syrophoenician woman. I mean, the list goes on and on. He always puts the paradigm back into where it should be. To our children. And those who are vulnerable, LGBTQ community, still, right? And we say Black Lives Matter. We center those who are marginalized. So as we continue to do that, as we continue to celebrate World Communion, we're reminded again, once again, in our gospel reading, that there's much to be done in our celebration. And, you know, just remembering all the, the struggles and the battles with the, within our own church family, you know, just, just bringing back so much memories right now as I stand with you, because we went through a lot as a church, too. Uh, in a good way. We're not the same church we were 20 years ago. We're not. There are less congregational, you know, our congregation has shrunk, right, in many ways. But I think really, this is not a bad news. It's not a bad news. We are a very different PCUSA we were than 20 years ago. And I think that we are more focused in ways that we have not been. Yesterday, we had a presbytery staff that came here. Um, the Grace Presbytery is not the same presbytery as it was 20 years ago now, right? We have historian, Presbyterian historian sitting over there, Matt. We're not the same church anymore. Our congregation, West Plano Presbyterian Church, is not the same church 20, 30 years ago. We will be celebrating our 50th anniversary in March. We still have the founding members here. Few of us here. It's not the same neighborhood church anymore. The neighborhood has changed. And, our, and the call, God's call for us to be present in this community and to bear witness of kingdom of God in our midst and how our faith is practiced there is a different sense in which we are called into today than we were 20 years ago. Many of us had family. We were concerned about raising our children in the life of faith. And that is very important. I'm not saying one is more important than the other, but our sense of call has shifted. Many of us are in retirement. And in as much as God has called Moses out of retirement, to do what? Well, the work of liberation of humanity, right? Of people who are suffering. It doesn't mean the pain and oppression is less out there. It is there. As soon as we walk out the door, we hear stories of people hurting and suffering all the time. Our sense of call has shifted. At the core, it's the same. But the paradigm is still there to the least and most vulnerable among us. And our call has shifted in response to our shifting community and our world. Do you sense it? Do you sense it? As we are celebrating as a more light church status, we are 
re- being reshaped, refashioned by the Spirit of God in our midst. And we are living in a very exciting time. I hope you share that joy with us, every one of us together, as we make, as we become agents of God's transformative love and power in our world. And as we celebrate our communion, as we are fed, and by t- actually, there is a, uh, I will explain the communion today. It's going to be a little different today. Your palate's going to notice that there's something different today. The paradigm is shifting. God is calling us, not only as a more light church, but the reason for being a more light and the reason for us to be here today, God is not finished with us yet. And all God's people said, Amen. stand. Let us affirm what we state what we believe using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God, begotten, not made, of one Father, Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the gifts of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Good morning. So the dictionary definition of stewardship. Stewardship is the responsible management of something that has been entrusted to one's care. I want to draw your attention to the confession from this morning, and particularly, you have entrusted us to care for all of creation. And in the hymn, One Bread, One Body, many the gifts, many the works, one in the Lord of all. Hi, I'm Sammy McHale. I've been in this church since 1986. This church is literally central to my life. It is my family. It is where I met Jenny, thank God. And it is where my children were raised and baptized. This family has made us who we are. This family has made Emily and Peter the adults that they are, compassionate, empathic, productive members of society. And as we've heard throughout the sermon and throughout the service, we are family, we are part of the world family. So what does stewardship mean in this time for us? It means giving of our time and our talents. Our time is obvious. Our talents is whatever we bring to the table, but also dollars and cents. Let's face it, the church needs it. Um, what I would like you to do is to prayerfully consider, as you are part of this family, how you will be sustaining this family for the next year. Thank you. Let us pray. God, we open our hearts and our minds and we lift our hearts to you in prayer for those, especially those who are suffering. In our community, we pray for wholeness, we pray for your healing presence and for your strength. We abide with them. We give them the strength they need today. We pray for Nancy who fell and needs uh, healing. Be with her. And we pray for Mark who's still continuing um, and suffering from pain in his body, we ask for relief, we ask for your healing presence. Lord, in your mercy. Your and Lord, we pray for the victims of hurricane that have devastated a lot of lives. We pray for those who are grieving and suffering. We pray for those who are still missing. We pray for the rescue workers and those who are First responders, we pray for them. Lord, in your mercy. Your Lord, we also continue to pray for our loved ones, our family members, the folks we have not named, but from the silence of our hearts, we do, and we remember especially those who are grieving because of loss of loved ones, those who are recovering from hospital, at home. We name them from the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And we pray for our broken world, O oh God, 
as the war continued to rage in the Middle East, we pray for peace. We pray for wisdom among political leaders to negotiate ceasefire now. We pray for families and who have been devastated by loss of loved ones through the war and violence, those who are displaced. We pray for our Christian brothers and sisters and churches in Lebanon as they celebrate the worldwide communion. Be with them. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we thank you. Now that we are a more like congregation, help us to continue our journey in the way of justice and peacemaking. We thank you that you have called us as a family of faith to take our baptisms seriously and to follow the way of Jesus, to be an agent of transformation and to extend your kingdom and your grace through our witness and through our mission. As we are fed in this place and as we continue our journey together, we ask for your empowerment of your Holy Spirit and we trust that you are always with us, and we thank you for each and every one of us here on a journey together. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us turn to one another with the peace of Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you. God, we trust in the provision of your love and the abundance of your grace. May the gifts we offer now sow seeds of peace and justice. Enable us to use them according to your will until each child finds welcome and all of creation is healed and reconciled to you. Amen. Amen. We gather at the Lord's table on this Worldwide Union Sunday, and you will notice at the table something is a little different. This is called dok in Korean. Dok means rice cake. There's no concept of bread in traditional Korean food, but this is what Koreans eat as a celebration on a particular holidays and what have you. Um, I suspect Moses didn't have this at a Passover meal, but as a celebration of worldwide communion. This is duck. So you'll get a morsel of duck, reminding us that God, Christ's presence is universal. It's not just in the, within the bread, 
but also within the daily bread that all people take across the world. So this is duck. Christ is present in this duck. And I will be sharing with you here in this. Uh, I will be pouring into this chalice the what's called makoli. Makoli is rice wine. Uh, before it becomes sake and distilled into sake, this is kind of a basic uh, Korean version or traditional beer because it's made out of rice and it is taken by common people, especially farmers. And after their long days of labor, uh, they drink this and they have fellowship with this. It is a bit on the sweet side, but it is very traditional Korean spirit. So you'll be having this as well as a part of it. We're at the Lord's table, remembering that all are welcome to partake of the meal and the drink because that is something very fundamental to our human existence, that all should have a portion of it, no matter where and who we are. And this is the way Christ offers himself and says to his disciples, remember me, remember me. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Indeed, it is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God. And your spirit hovered over the waters and brought forth all creation and breathed into us the breath of life and set us on the earth to praise and serve you. When we were lost our way and you called us back and sent your own son to save us. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the choirs of angels and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Thank you for Jesus, our Savior and Lord, and by your Spirit you named him beloved and empowered him to serve the poor, proclaim freedom from sin's bondage, and befriend the friendless and the outcasts. When he breathed his last upon a cross, you raised him from the tomb, breaking the power of death and opening the way to eternal life. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Let us declare the great mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, risen, and Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine. Unite us with Christ and with all who trust in him, that we may be one in ministry in every place. And as this body is broke, Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Set our hearts aflame with love for the truth and the desire to do your will and make our witness to Christ burn brightly and make and keep us faithful until Christ comes in final victory. And we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Let us pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our sins, 
as we forgive those who sin against us, and save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus gave thanks to God and turned to his disciples, and he said, This is my body broken for you. Take and do this in remembrance of me. In solidarity with all Christian brothers and sisters who are baptized, we share this morsel. In the same manner, he took the cup and he blessed it, and he poured the makali. And he said, this is my cup, share with me, with human suffering. This is my love for you. The bread of heaven for the people of God. Thanks. Thanks.
Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet in your eternal kingdom. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
favorite hymn, Justice and Joy. For everyone born, there is a place at the table. We don't live in a perfect world. There's a lot of violence and a lot of hatred and discrimination. There's still work of peace and hope that needs to be done. We don't live in a perfect world, but to imagine a world in which there is no war, to imagine a world in which everyone is invited and welcome at the table. What we do here in this sacred space matters because imagination and our faith practice and our commitment is a powerful, powerful thing. And so we carry that with us to imagine a better world of peace. We take that in our hearts. Not only in our global world, but in our family, in our relationship, with our creation, and our community. As we take that with us, remember that you're not alone. Just as Jesus was not alone, but empowered by the Spirit of God and by His community. And so we too go from this place empowered by the Spirit of God and by our community here, by the body of Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And now may the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. God's love endures forever. Amen.